Hello everyone. Uh, for this section, we'll actually be talking about parameters in pharmacokinetics. kinetics. So again, bear in mind, uh, this particular class is actually for first year pharm pharmacy school students. So therefore, uh, there will be just an introduction of different equations, but not really the actual calculations. So these are the points that we're going to go through later. So we'll go through uh, some uh, drug characteristics parameters and also some models right, uh, which are involved in the drug dosing. Right, so the first one that we're going to talk about is about volume of distribution. We already briefed through it a little bit uh, for the distribution side. So um, if you can see here, the actual definition of VD is actually a little bit complicated. Uh, sounds like a riddle. So it's called the volume of fluid required to contain the, same, the total amount of drug in the body at the same concentration as measured in the plasma. So uh, again, as mentioned, there's, there's no way, other ways that you can use to sample the concentration of the drug in your body besides the blood, right? Because that's the most acceptable way for someone to poke for another person to get some blood samples rather than you cut some tissue out for different time points to analyze the amount of the concentration of drug at the tissues. Right, so we can only make estimations based on plasma concentration. So therefore, this is the equation. So the unit is liter per kg. So it's normally assumed as the first order kinetics. Right, so you can see if the plasma concentration is really weird, your VD value will get really, really weird. Like for example, if the plasma concentration is really low, the VD will be exceptionally high. So uh, this is again, remember it's a mathematical model, so uh, whatever calculations that you do over here, so this could be the actual one, right, it's more like an actual fact because obviously the, the distribution of molecules is not even over different compartments, but for calculation purposes we're actually assuming the whole thing is equal, so this is what we call apparent volume of distribution, right, so um, and here, there's four different models, so it's similar like the one, the distribution one, the four guy there, so it's the same concept. So there's a few values over here. And bear in mind, uh, for this class, I'm actually using the unit of liter per kg. So for some books, they're actually using the unit of liter, so the values obviously will be different. Uh, I prefer to use liter per kg because uh, based on the books, because a lot of it obviously is written in the Western world. Um, the per kg, uh, they are using the uh, the average population average of 70 kgs but I don't think that's that much I think the, the local average weight is much lower because I think there's not many people in the class actually hit 70 kg right especially girls right I think you're about 50 something by the time you get to 60 kg I think you'll be screaming <laughs> sorry okay so um, yeah so I'm using liter per kg so if all the drug that you measure is actually in the plasma, so it'd be about 0 0.05, right? So um, yeah, so bear in mind, I'm using liter per kg to omit the factors of the weight of the person. So um, so if it's about similar to the extracellular fluid, so it would be around 0 0.2. So if the calculation line is about 0 0.55, it's a little bit nearer to the total body water. So if the VD is really huge, 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 unrealistic, so bear in mind that it doesn't mean... It, doesn't mean that the it's the person is weird or the drug is weird. It's just because that based on the formula just now, because uh, you have to divide it per plasma concentration. The plasma concentration monitored might be very really low, but doesn't mean that the drug is really out of the body. It just mean that the drug is still within the body, for some examples. But it's just that it's already out of the systemic circulation. So you can see, so 1, 2, 3, 4 points over here will correspond to the next 1, 2, 3, 4 in the slide, right? So the first one will be, as mentioned, the, the value about 0 0.05 one, so it will be the first one. The second one where distribution is a little bit uh, even to other tissues, and whereby the third one is equal distribution in both sides, so it will be like 0 0.5, uh, around 0 0.55 liter per kg, and the last one is the... Uh, when you can get unrealistic values, right? So the second concept that we're going to look at is actually on the clearance or CL. It refers to how much of the volume of plasma cleared of the drug per unit time. So it can be uh, ml per minute, right? So uh, it depends on a few uh, concepts in a way. It depends on how you actually give the drug. So if you're actually giving the drug as an IV, IVI, meaning a IV infusion form, so it's a constant rate of 
of amount of drug getting in. So it will divide by the concentration of the drug at the steady state. So uh, later we'll talk about steady state concentration later on as well. So another part is about, or you can give the drug as a single bolus dose, meaning you just give the drug as one dose, and then you divide by the area of under the curve. So there's total body clearance actually depends on you know the, all the other clearance it can be from a little bit from the liver from the nephron and you know from your poo and and everywhere else right so uh, but the most important will be hepatic and renal ones so there'll be other factors but they won't play that a huge role so uh, before we go through the steady state and so on you actually have to go through a concept called half life as well so half life of the drug refers to the time required. For the concentration for half so the half life that we look at here is actually the same concept as we look at the half life of a radioactive substance that you learn in your high school time right so half life is the main determinant of drug dosing frequency that's why it's very very important to determine the drug half life actually okay so there are drugs over here if you look at it some of it has very very short half life like paracetamol so for it to stay at a very high concentration in the body throughout so you actually need to use it at qid dosing for four times some of the drugs although the parent drug might be a very short half life but sometimes the drugs might have very active metabolites which has very long half life so therefore it sort of compensates the whole thing so therefore you can use it in once daily but if you look at the third example over here, which is the dioxin, you can see that the half-life of the drug is really, really, really long, up to 50 hours, right? So if you follow the calculations and so on, so you may actually need to give the drug like, you know, every other day kind of thing and so on. But it's very, very troublesome for people to remember if you give the drug every other day or every two days, for example. It's just... It's just a hay bot, for example, you uh, you have, imagine the counselling, you have to tell a person, Hello auntie, you have to take your drug uh, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, after Friday is what, Sunday, and the next week will be Tuesday, Thursday, oh my god, it's going to be a nightmare, no one can remember it, right? So, you still give the drug as one daily dosing, but you have to adjust the dose of the drug that you're giving. Right, so you can see the half-life calculation is like over here, so it's actually uh, equals to long 2 divided uh, times VD, which is your volume of distribution, divided by clearance. So as you can see over here, something is not here, uh, which a lot of people be a bit, um, so you have to remember that as well, which is your dose of the drug. So it doesn't matter if you give the person 20 mg, 10 mg or 5 mg, the half-life of the drug will still be the same because we are looking at the amount of time required for the concentration to drop half of its value. Right, so factors affecting half-life, so it's again very uh, e much, much more easy to remember if you remember the equation. So anything that can uh, increase the VD, so you can see if you have VD, increase in obesity so obviously the size is bigger there's bigger space that you need to diffuse around right or it can be pathological fluid increase like edema right so many fluid accumulation so aging there might be reduced muscle mass so you might decrease the vd you decrease the half-life clearance is at the bottom so therefore the effect is the ballet is inverse so if clearance goes down half-life goes up so you can see there's other forms over here as well like heart failure and so on will decrease the clearance and don't uh, forget the importance of your cytochrome p450 uh, which details will be in the metabolism class so factors affecting so these are all the things that will affect your half-life and remember your initial drug concentration has no role in it okay half-life to steady state concentration as mentioned just now steady state is something very important because it's when you're assuming that the amount of drug that enters the body that is equivalent to the amount of drug that gets out eventually because there's an equilibrium state that eventually hit so this is when um, your drug concentration will sort of be stable right uh, meaning build maintain so when do you reach steady state concentration so steady state concentration will you reach when it's about four to five half lives right so and if you stop the drug over here so again the, the drug concentration will drop eventually as well so this is how you need so because sometimes you need to calculate when the steady state occurs so again four to five half lives so single dose and multiple dose 
a multiple dose you're looking at CSS and also loading dose sometimes you may need it uh, because sometimes if the drug half-life is very very long as just now you can see it take time for the drug concentration to actually reach its maximum so uh, for multiple dosing you might need for drugs with very long half-life but when you want the effect of the drug to actually kick in immediately you might need to give the person a loading dose I meaning that you actually give need to give them a giant do first dose then followed by the other smaller doses on the other days right so single dosing uh, is sometimes you use it so which is refers to the uh, other comp uh, other <coughs> Um, other types of information like uh, elimination kinetics and compartment models that you can find in other videos already. Okay, so for maintenance dose as mentioned, you need uh, a steady state whereby steady state concentration, maintenance, whatever is in equals to whatever is out, it goes out. So four to five half-lives. So if it's infusion rate, so this is where your IVI infusion equals to clearance times your CSS. Right, so if it's an oral regimen, so it's per dosing, isn't it? So we need to take into account the tau as well. So tau is the dosage interval, and F in this case is your bioavailability. Okay, so loading dose, as mentioned, you need something um, for, for drug which has very, very long half life. So loading dose, you can get your target times your BD. Right, so um, Okay, so the next one is something important that I might need to spend a little bit more time. So this is when the role of pharmacist comes in, right? Um, so you can see the drug concentration for the first three ones on top is the one in the ideal situation whereby when you look at the arrow over here is when you actually give the drug. So you need to design, that's why the drug has a certain instruction of taking it, isn't it? So for the first one actually you give the drug, you take the second dose when all the drug concentration actually drops eventually, then you give the second dose. So, uh, but most of the time, if it's an oral take-back medication, we'll try to design the dosage regimen into this section, this way. But, but before all the drug is cleared out in the body, you actually give a second dose. So the concentration will slowly build up and this will be your target concentration range. So therefore, you can achieve the therapeutic uh, effects uh, throughout the whole day because like for example, if you look at blood pressure medication, you don't actually just want the blood pressure to be in control only for certain parts of the day you want it to be in control throughout the day isn't it so you want the concentration to sort of build up but not too high until you reach the toxicity effect but it'll still be within the efficacy range that you want so this is the diagram however the last one when you look at it here it's when you see in patients who are non-compliant so what happens remember just now that a drug actually needs to take four to five half life to before it builds up to its own uh, steady state concentration so when you look at it so this is what happens uh, clinically if you if you meet some a naughty patient <laughs> so what happens on day one day two day three so imagine this is monday tuesday when they just after the clinic so they remember to take the medication so the concentration will be fine but maybe during weekends for example the person is out so they forgot to take the medication. So after, by the time they remember, it will be the time before. But, ah, yeah, I forgot to take medication today. I know, my lad, too late already. Let's do it tomorrow. And you forget again tomorrow, so you miss two doses. By day three, so maybe it's just back to Monday again. It's like, oh, I have to take my medication now. I missed two days already. So the fellow thought that once you take the medication, you get your full effect of the medication immediately. But no, you actually need a few days. So before that, and then remember for a few days, and then forget again. So you can see the concentration will just go up and down. Uh, and actually, you, the patient will actually would not experience the full coverage or the full effect of the drug that is intended. So therefore, it actually could be quite dangerous to the patient. Right. Um, so there's effects of different dosing. So this is what you want. So remember, there's actually a therapeutic dose range. Normally for medication, there's a range that you can hit. It's not just a value that you need to hit because then it will be just too way too dangerous. So obviously the toxic range will be up there. So we try to make sure that the toxic range and your therapeutic range drugs will be a huge, a wider range that will uh, determine will form into a wider therapeutic index rather than a narrow therapeutic index. Right, so um, this is an ideal form, so your concentration is over here. So if the half-life is long, we can give a booster dose, i.e. like a loading dose to make sure the concentration is more here. If it's a toxic dose, the person take more than intended, so you can hit, you can see the range, so you hit a lot of toxicity. 
or in the other case is subtherapeutic dosing the person is compliant yes but the concentration taken is too low so maybe the doctor is asked to take one tablet the fellow is too af afraid of side effects I'll just cut it into half and take half a tablet every day so then the dosing will be this way right so um, this is the wording for it so again uh, this is just what we try to avoid in a way for certain drugs we try to give them at a smaller dose at a more frequent interval rather than a big dose at a a wider interval because if you give them a big dose you might actually hit more toxic ranges and more subtherapeutic range okay. okay so hopefully you understand all these concepts and uh, don't forget about the therapeutic index that we mentioned I'm not sure it's not in the slide but you can easily google it up uh, for therapeutic index so drugs with white therapeutic index meaning they are safer in a way uh, it's like paracetamol right so they mean has a white value uh, for a, and it, an index refers to a concentration so you can actually get a value right compared to the narrow therapeutic index okay so go find out about it but uh, hopefully with all the, the whole pharmacokinetic class ends and you go through all the videos you can understand this whole diagram over here okay have fun thank you